after saving the Earth, the Paladins are off to stop Minerva once and for all. It's crazy to think that Voltron has come to an end. Premiering in 2016, we've been gifted with eight seasons of Voltron Legendary Defender, and it has hands down been one of my favorite shows to watch in recent years. Was this the series finale fans deserved? I'm Chris Carr, and today we're reviewing season eight of Voltron Legendary Defender. Oh yeah. As per usual, the first chunk of this video will be spoiler free. I'll give you a big ol' warning when we're about to be moving into spoiler territory. And trust me, it's a big one. Season 7 had our paladins earthbound, defending the good citizens of their home planet from galactic threat, and working to create a vessel to replace the Altaian castle for their travels in lion storage. Season 8 kicks off with us getting off the ground and taking it to space! The very first episode is a fantastic exploration of how far the team has come, how they've grown, matured, and strengthened their bond. Keith and Lance, they aren't the squabbling dudes we met in Season 1. Lance isn't always cracking jokes and gloating about what a ladies' man he is in his own mind. Keith isn't dead set on doing things alone and has cooled that temper of his. Listen, if she's going out with you, it's because she likes you. The annoying, stupid, Earth version of you. <laughs> Contrasting this, we don't get much Keith Shiro time. Sorry, shippers. It makes sense narratively to have this dynamic not be at the forefront like it has been in past seasons. Shiro's no longer a paladin, really, and he's got a whole space force to command. We explored the ins and outs of Keith and Shiro, so I for one was pleased to see Keith spending more time with his old archenemy. Gave the series a nice full circle feel. And speaking of taking things full circle, in season seven, and guys, this so isn't a spoiler, it happens the first episode, Lance's crush on Allura finally turns into a relationship. Yeah, this was so well done, it was so sweet. Throughout the series, you see them get these little stolen moments where they get to hold hands, ah, I'm so stick cute. I was wondering if uh, maybe if you want to, you could have dinner with me tonight. I'd love to. Sorry, Keith and Lance shippers. Whew, Voltron shippers, y'all are intense. What I particularly enjoyed in this series send-off were all the callbacks to the 80s version of the franchise. Like how the Paladins apparently inspire a Voltron-themed television show, which leads Pidge to play her persona to wheel and deal at the mall, where she picks out an outfit for Alora's that's a dead ringer for the original Alora suit. Or when we get a glimpse of Pidge's latest project, Chip, a callback to Pidge's twin brother in the original series and a member of the vehicle Voltron team. While this first episode is fairly lighthearted, the rest of the season is pretty focused, with very little filler. Now the gang will go off to a carnival of sorts at one point, but even that episode is balanced out with important and dangerous decisions. There aren't any D&D palate cleanser episodes here, my friends. Our heroes are here to grow their coalition and stop the priestess formerly known as Hagar. Season 8 really delivers on explaining just who Hagar is. Uh, sure, we've learned throughout the series that she was Lotor's mother and an Altaian scientist, but Season 8 gives us tremendous insight to just how she became Hagar. It also sheds a lot of light on why Lotor behaved as he did. I wish we had been given more of her story early on in the series, though. Always lurking in the background, she would have been a much more effective villain if the majority of her backstory wasn't crammed into episode two. The episode also fails to let the audience know which flashback is hearkening to the distant past, recent events, and the current timeline. It makes these crucial events of her life seem really muddled. And that being said, she's a good villain. Her ultimate goal and what our heroes are fighting against is to augment reality, creating one true perfect reality. You understand her perspective and even sympathize with her at times. I mean, who wouldn't want a reality where none of the terrible, heartbreaking events of your life occurred? I can forgive a rushed backstory, and I think y'all can too. If there's anything bad to say about this final season, it's that, that there was so much to cover that things felt oddly paced at times. Dragging in one episode, then moving full tilt the next. Anerva tricking the Altaians to join her crusade. The Voltron Coalition's goals, multiverses and multiple realities. But that could just also be me wanting to spend more time exploring these concepts because I didn't want the show to end. Now, before we get to the spoiler section, I do want to commend the writers for one particularly stellar episode that I think is going to be a standout for everybody, Day 47. The episode is told through the video lens of Kincaid, a recruit we met last season. He's documenting his experience aboard the Atlas and gives us a fantastic slice of life look aboard the ship. It's funny, it's exciting, and it has Hunk deliver such a pure message that's been at the core of his character. How you should learn about other cultures and find ways to connect with them. You did this for them? Why? I don't know. Because food has a way of reminding people of moments in time. That's why I made a dessert. Usually when you eat dessert, you're pretty happy, right? Who knows? Maybe this will help those Altaians remember some moment that made them smile. This is beautiful storytelling, and why Hunk is one of my favorite characters. This idea of finding common ground in something as simple as a snack to bridge cultural differences is definitely something I think people need to see. Despite your differences, you can find something to bond over with anyone, no matter how different you are. All right, y'all, next up, we are talking spoilers. 
I'm kicking things off with the biggest spoiler of the finale, so if you don't want me to ruin this, turn away now. Do you want to do it, Whitney? Yeah. Do you want to WrestleMania sports? Spoilers? Yeah. Spoiler section! <laughs> spoiler section. In order to restore all realities, Allura sacrifices herself. She knows that doing so will kill her, and she still makes the hard choice. Well, this was obviously a huge loss. I think it was handled so well. I know, some people are going to be very against the sacrifice, but Voltron has always been about loss and sacrifice. And Allura making an active choice to do this is so powerful. Her goodbyes to her friends are beautiful, and it makes sense that Allura makes this decision. Allura chooses to save everyone, chooses to end the violence between her family, her people, against Anerva Zarkon and the Galra. She ultimately is the legendary defender of the universe. And to me, it felt right that the figure who brought our paladins together would be the one to leave them when the final battle came. Man, between this and Adventure Time, Jeremy Shadow just can't keep a princess, huh? <laughs> I'm so sorry that was too soon. We get a Where Are They Now ending before we part ways with our paladins, and guys, I'm not sure how I feel about how they handled Shiro. Well, I was so happy my boy got a happy ending, complete with a kiss. Who the f was that guy? We were casually informed that Shiro was gay when we learned about Adam, and then we never speak of his sexuality ever again until this end button. Were there natural places to discuss his sexuality? I'd argue that there weren't, aside from that flashback. But he was also sort of mitigated to the sidelines this season. At the very least, I think this is lazy storytelling. But hey, I'd love to know what you guys have to say about this, so be sure to let me know in the comments. So, does this final season deliver? Absolutely! It's bittersweet, and sure, it's got its problems, but it's a good, proper send-off to a series that I think will absolutely stand the test of time and be regarded as a classic. I don't want you guys to just check out season eight. I want you to watch season eight, then rewatch the whole series again with all this Hagar information and see how it affects your viewing. Heck, just watch it over and over again because it's amazing. I put it up there with Avatar The Last Airbender. I love this series so much, and I really hope you do too. Of course, this is just my opinion. Am I blinded by my love of Voltron? Do you have anything to add? Well, let's chat about it down below. Like this video, subscribe to Nerdwire, hit that bell to know when we drop new videos. And thanks for watching. Until next time, remember all things in moderation except your shows.